Hey guys, this is what we're going to be creating today. So a few months ago I was tasked with doing some visual effects for Youngblood's Die a Little music video. And some of the direction that came for this series of visual effects shots was, it was pretty vague, but it was pretty much, they wanted kind of the venom, oily, tar substance coming out of Youngblood's mouth. Now the deadline was pretty tight, so when I was breaking down how I was going to do this, I really wanted to kind of have that effect in Venom where the black tar kind of creeps and crawls so it looks like it's living, but I just really didn't have the time to go through with that. So what I had instead were kind of these tendrils that were kind of crawling through um, the tar just to give it uh, some life. So that's the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating these tendrils and then we're going to go through and do the liquid. Now when I did this visual effect um, I did it in real flow for the music video but there's tons of visual effects tutorials out there for real flow and there's not a whole lot for X particles so I kind of broke down broke it down and did the same effect in X particles and it uh, turns out pretty similar so we should be able to get some good results through X particles. Alright let's dive in. So I'm going to move a little bit quicker in this tutorial than my last couple. Um, those were kind of basics tutorials and I wanted to keep them slow so you could, um, if it was your first time doing those things, you could uh, keep up. I'm going to move a little bit quicker in this one. Um, if you guys want, I can do an X-Particles basics tutorial and kind of go slower through all the minutia. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to open up an X-Particles system. We're going to change the emitter from a rectangle to a circle. We're going to rotate that 90 degrees so those particles are going the other way, 180 degrees now, pointing straight up. Okay, so since these are going to be the tendrils, we only want like say 10 particles. So we're going to go into the emitter. We're going to change the emission from a rate to a shot. Bring the shot count down to 10 and we'll bring the speed variation to maybe 30 or 26. Now I understand that YouTube is going to compress this so I'm going to go into my display settings here so we can see these particles. Um, we'll go to circle there now we can see them. Okay so that looks pretty good to be the head of those tendrils coming up. So now we're going to add a modifier in here. It's a turbulence modifier. That's going to give some waviness to these particles. Um, we'll probably crank the scale up here to about 225. Bring the strength down to 4. Let's see what that gets us. It's a little tough to see how much turbulence is being added, so we're going to go ahead and add our trails or our tails. No, it is trail <laughs> in generators and add the emitter into that trail generator. So now when we go back and start this up, we can see our trails. And there's a little bit of waviness going on there, not a whole lot. We can play with our turbulence a little bit more, maybe bring the scale down. There we go, I like that. We bring the strength up to, say, five again and see what we get. Alright, so for these trails, uh, what you got to do first is go to the trail, and I'm working in Octane here, so we're going to go into C4D Octane Tags, Octane Object Tag, select Hair, and Render as Hair. I'm going to bring the root thickness up to about 6, and the tip thickness to about 4. Now down here we can see in the render, we have these tendrils going on here. Alright, so I'm going to bring my render viewer up here so we can see this a bit better. Now I'm going to add this clear glass texture to the trail just because it's a cool look. And then I'm going to add an HDRI um, just for a visual reference here. I use a plugin from uh, Grayscale Gorilla called HDRI Link. I recommend looking it up. It is outstanding. That should work. So we can see this looks pretty cool. And these tendrils kind of grow up from the base, 
have a little bit of turbulence. I'm going to slow, no, I'm not going to slow them down. Okay. Now let's move on to the liquid simulation. So we're going to call this tendrils. That's maybe how you spell it. Who knows? Now I'm going to create a new X particle system here. Call this tar. First thing, take the, I'm going to hide the tendrils. I'm going to take the emitter now from our tar, make that from a rectangle to a circle again, rotate it, see if I guessed right this time, see which way it's spinning them. I did. Okay, so we want these to be swirling around a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is add a turbulence modifier. Maybe bring the scale up a little bit, but shouldn't do too much to them because we're going to have them be affected by something else. So we can see there's some turbulence going on, but we want these to be following something, swirling around something. So I'm going to go up here to the pen tool and create a helix. We're going to rotate this helix negative 90 degrees, so it's facing upwards. I'm going to go into the object panel here and bring the start radius way down to maybe 6, and the end radius way down maybe two. Bring the height up so they don't fly away. Now to make these particles follow that we need to go into our modifiers, motion modifier, XP spine, spline flow. We'll take our helix spline, drag it down into the spline option. And now these should follow pretty well going along with it. I like it. I'm going to go back into the emitter here, and I'm going to change the speed variation, bring that up just to give some variation so they're not all coming out at the same speed. That way it's not so perfectly going around this helix. Okay, now let's bump up. When you're doing a liquid simulation, you need a lot of particles going on. So I'm going to bump up my particles from 1,000 to 10,000 just for now so we can see should still run pretty smoothly it does okay so to give this a mesh we're gonna go into generators create a OVDB mesher and we're gonna grab our emitter and drag it down into the sources down here now we have this giant ugly blob going up not giving us much detail so what we want to do is we want to go back into our emitter and change the radius down here to say 1. That should give us some smoother material to work with here. Let's go look at our mesher. Let's bring the voxel size up. Let's say here. Just give it a smoother finish. I'm not really seeing the swirl going on too much, so I'm going to turn off this turbulence for right now. See if we can get some of that swirling back. Might need to go into our helix and widen out the base a little bit. And radius a little bit. Now we're getting some nice movement down here. Bring up the height on it. See what we get. There we go. That's quite a bit better. Now we're getting some real movement. Okay, I have this black uh, glossy octane material down here. It's super simple. It's just diffuse set to black specular all the way up, roughness just a tad bit so it's not perfectly glossy. I'm going to drop that down on the mesher and here we go. Now we have a look. I'm going to turn back on the tendrils so we can see those coming up. And they're getting hidden by they're coming up a little bit too slow. So I'm going to go into our particle emitter for our tar and see if slowing down that emission, the speed a little bit can give us some room for those tendrils to come out. 
There we go, now we're starting to see them. So this is pretty cool. Kind of have this tarry look. We have these tendrils kind of growing out and back into the tar. They're kind of waving along the surface. I'd still like to see those tendrils coming out sooner. So let's go into our tendrils emitter. Bring up the speed a little bit on those. Let's see if those can get out a little bit sooner. There we go. There you have it. So yeah, I would just render this out as an alpha with no background. I'd cut out the bottom, mask out his mouth, and put this in there, and that was pretty much it. A little bit of tracking to go with his head movement, but other than that, this is pretty much it. Alright guys, that's it for me on this one. I hope you learned something. Um, I know I moved pretty quickly through it, so if you have any questions, ask away in the comments and I will get back to you. Um, if you have any ideas for future tutorials, leave a comment for me and I'll try to do that. Um, this is my third tutorial. I've got a couple up on my channel at this point. One's destruction, breaking down walls, and one is building a forest with Octane Scatter and Forester. So make sure you check those out. Alright, I'll see you guys on the next one.